Hi, my name is Alice Wong, and I love social media. I use it in my personal life and in my work as an advocate. I'd like to thank Ted Jackson and the Disability Organizing for inviting me to talk with you today. I can't be there in person, but I prepared a short video presentation about crypto votes, the usage of social media, and a few examples of how people are using the hashtag to get out the vote efforts. Drift the Vote is a nonpartisan online campaign to, to engage both voters and politicians in a productive discussion about disability issues at the local, state, and federal level during this election year. The mission of the campaign is threefold. To encourage disabled people to become politically active, to amplify the voices of the people with disabilities and the issues they care about, and to share our views on disability policies to the broader public. Here are images of two of my co-partners, Andrew Paul Wright on the left, and Greg Baratan on the right. This is from a recent Google Hangout, where we gave a presentation to Geo Disabled and Proud's Youth Voting Summit. Around January of this year, Greg came up with the idea of an online campaign and asked Andrew and me to join him. And that's how we started this project. We noticed last fall there wasn't much mention of disability by various candidates or journalists covering people with disabilities as a block of voters. We believed we could fill this void by starting conversations using social media both within the disability community for ourselves and to the public. I created a hashtag Crip the Vote as a riff on Rock the Vote. To me, using Crip as an active verb expresses a sense of disability pride and culture. We understand the word Crip isn't a term of choice by many. Some people have painful experiences with the word and some find it offensive. We respect that and want to emphasize that we're not speaking for everyone, especially the disability community. We believe there's room for multiple hashtags and conversations. There's something for everyone. Group the Vote's activities are centered on social media, Twitter in particular. We chose this approach for the following reasons. One, it takes a lot of resources and energy to organize in-person events. Two, we can have conversations with a wide range of people by using the hashtag and having organized Twitter chats on specific issues. Three, it's relatively easy to use social media and doesn't require any special training or preparation, just practice. And four, for three people who don't do this for a living or with any professional connections to the political world, Twitter is one direct and public way to insert ourselves into the broader policy and election conversation. We realize that social media is not everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. While it's a powerful tool, using social media is a privilege, and we recognize that. We understand that our campaign will not reach everyone, but there are many other campaigns that are not aligned with similar goals. There is something for everyone, and there's no wrong way to be an advocate. So, at this point, I'll briefly describe three examples of our activities. Twitter chats, our online survey, and the activism with the hashtag itself. First is with Twitter chats. I mentioned that most of our advocacy takes place on Twitter. A uh, Twitter chat is a public discussion that uses a hashtag as a virtual meeting point on Twitter. A hashtag is a way of making tweets more easily searchable. It's like a keyword for a certain subject or concept. We've had six Twitter chats so far this year. Some of the questions we ask people with disabilities are specific, while others are broad, such as what issues are you most interested in? What do you hope to see discussed during the election by the candidates? What should candidates know about people with disabilities? How do we make disability policies and issues known to poor people during this election year? In one of our recent chats on voter access, many talked about the visibility of waiting a line and going to your local polling place while others talked about how convenient and accessible bail-in ballots are. One person was bugged 
that she couldn't get a high photo sticker because she voted by mail. Based on the feedback, we created group the vote stickers for our communities to get out the vote efforts. Here are the images of the stickers that say, I registered to vote, I vote, and I voted. They're available at my Sazzle store at www.sazzle.com slash disability visibility. By the way, I'd like to invite you all to our next chat on June 18th, 12th noon Pacific, titled Mass Incarceration, Disability, and the Legal System with guest host Dalila Lewis, an organizer, attorney, and professor. For more details on the chat, you can go to Crypt the Votes Facebook page or my website, disabilityvisibilityproject.com. This is a screenshot of our Facebook page. This spring, we conducted an online survey on disability policy and issues. My co-partner, Andrew Paul Ray, spearheaded this effort. 508 people responded to the top five disability issues in terms of importance were number one, health care, number two, civil rights discrimination, Number three, accessibility. Number four, employment. And number five, housing. The survey also asked respondents to select their top disability policy ideas. And the number one idea was hire and appoint more disabled people to government and policy making positions. The third example of activities is usage of the hashtag itself. Using it invites people to advocate for themselves. It belongs to everyone. We have very little control over the conversations, and that's the way it should be. It's also an effective organizing method by gathering people with similar interests and having a method of engaging with others. Here are a few screenshots of tweets by people using CryptoVote hashtag. We have folks who tweet and describe their experiences with political participation. Felissa Thompson tweeted a photo of herself with the message, representing Fairfield County as a delegate at the hashtag SCDP State Convention, hashtag group the vote, hashtag disability, hashtag WOCWD. She used various hashtags to spread her tweet beyond trip the vote, such as the South Carolina Democratic Party and what that denotes her identity as a woman of color with a disability. Here are two tweets about voting. Laura Tuchman tweeted, I just cast my first independent ballot using a fully accessible voting machine. I am totally blind. It felt awesome. Hashtag CryptoVote. Aaron Hawley tweeted, Never drop my mail in ballot to vote. We'll try going to a polling place tomorrow if I can get a ride. Sigh. Hashtag CryptoVote. Hashtag NJVotes. Other people are using the hashtag to encourage engagement with candidates running for office. A person named Solomon D.S. has been tweeting a series of questions on specific disability policy issues by district. In this case, he tweeted to fans all of Nevada. He tweeted, Please ask NV02, rep candidate at all for Congress, to abolish the submittable wage for disabled workers, hashtag trip the vote. And he tweeted a link to a report about submittable wages. With these tweets, we can see people reporting their experiences from specific locations. There's rich variation by disability, geography, and race, just to name a few. And that diversity is important to document when it comes to get out the vote efforts.
There are also folks pushing back at ableist rhetoric about disability by the media and candidates. The biggest solder tweeted, We refuse to support presidential candidates to defeat disabled people's lives. What if I'm Americans disabled? Colon. Our votes. Hashtag rip the vote. Hashtag rev up. People who tweet with Crypt the Votes are connecting broader issues to disability. These next two examples connect disability with voter ID and the Voting Rights Act. Deborah tweeted, Voter ID is a disability issue. I don't have a driver's license, nor do many PWD. Hashtag Crypt the Vote. Dan S. tweeted a response to a quote by Mitch McConnell on the Voting Rights Act that said, There are any barriers to voting anymore in 2016. He tweeted, Voters with disabilities among others would disagree. Hashtag CryptoVote. A hashtag to facilitate movement building. Here's a tweet by Judy Human, which was a personal thrill to see. She tweeted, Hashtag Crip the Vote. This movement is trying to get candidates address issues facing the disability community this election. For my last example, the Autistic Self Advocacy Network tweeted, When people with disabilities consider themselves part of a group, they take action, such as their Crip the Vote. I'd like to thank my co partners, Andrew and Greg, for being such great co operators. In the last six months of this campaign, it's been amazing to see people come together and influence one another. A big thank you goes to everyone who participated. It takes a lot of work to build an online community. You can't convince people to use a particular hashtag, they have to see the value in it. I think it's fair to say that our campaign, to Group the Vote, does the following. It gives people a day of space for their stories and voices. It gives people a way to initiate dialogue with candidates about disability issues from the perspective of disabled people. It gives people a sense of ownership and identity that we belong to the significant body of voters that is tired of being taken for granted and adored. It's a photo of me that I tweeted, holding a sign that says, I vote because the Medicaid poverty trap needs to end. I hope you'll consider joining us, whether it's just reading crypto vote tweets or participating in our upcoming activities. If you have any questions or feedback, you can email me at disabilityvisibilityproject at gmail.com or find me on Twitter at sfdirewolf. Thank you.